I'm Andrew Roberts, a 17-year-old junior at Algonquin Regional High School. To me, diversity is the ability for all people, regardless of their differences, to be able to thrive. Around the age of two, I was diagnosed with autism, and my parents were told I may never speak. My parents refused to believe this, and they enrolled me in the home-based program at the New England Center for Children, also known as NECC, a local school for autistic children in hopes I could overcome some of my challenges and learn to talk. I made fast progress, and by the time I was three, not only was I talking, I was reading. Thanks to the help I received at NECC, I was able to begin public preschool with support at the age of three. Ever since then, I have received support through an individualized education plan, also known as an IEP. When I began public school, I faced many challenges that made it hard for me to succeed, but each year I have made progress with the help of amazing teachers, therapists, aides, community members, and specialized services both in and out of school. I will always be autistic, and I still have challenges today. Even though I have come out of my comfort zone socially, it has not always been easy for me at Algonquin. I think that because I'm openly autistic and kept to myself in the past, I'm perceived in a certain way by others. This has made it a struggle to find truly genuine friendships throughout most of my life. In recent years, I have worked hard to put labels like shy, socially awkward, and reclusive behind me, and as a result, I have started to develop meaningful relationships. However, I can't always control how I'm perceived, and I still feel there are some peers that act insincerely towards me and others with disabilities. Roughly 1 in 50 have been diagnosed with autism, but I think there are more autistic people out there who are either afraid to get diagnosed or afraid to disclose their diagnosis. They may be scared to be treated differently because of this label. If neurodiverse individuals were treated the same way as anyone else, they would have more opportunities to be valuable friends, co-workers, leaders, or partners. In addition, more people with disabilities would feel confident disclosing their disability. I sometimes wonder what things would be like if I had a fresh start at a new school and never told anyone I was autistic. Despite my social challenges, I have been fortunate to have ongoing support from my family, school district, and community that have enabled me to be resilient and advocate not only for myself, but also the autism community. This help has allowed me to become the person I am today. I'm grateful that I have been given the support I need to succeed. However, not everyone with a disability who needs support has been lucky enough to receive it. Just 19.3% of those with disabilities had a job in 2019, and in 2020, due to the pandemic, those numbers decreased to 17.9%. Everyone has an opportunity to help change this inequity. I have worked to give back to the autism community, raising money for organizations like the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation for Autism, who help people and families affected by autism live life to the fullest by giving out grants to other organizations, giving autistic people the resources they need to succeed, and giving them work experience. The Flutie Foundation has been able to help me work towards a potential career in sports journalism. I have been interested in sports since I was about five and I've written a sports blog called Boston Sports Mania for seven years. It was through this that I realized I wanted to become a sports journalist. In addition to my fundraising efforts for the Flutie Foundation, I have served as a reporter and ambassador for the organization as a Flutie Fellow. I hope that this fellowship leads me to a real job in professional sports journalism, which would allow me to follow my passions and inspire others with disabilities. I also hope that more people with disabilities can access whatever supports they need, not only to survive, but also to thrive. Diversity has been a focus in the last year, but there's still more that can be done to help marginalized populations succeed and feel included, and I believe that conversation should include people with disabilities. I challenge you to ask yourself, are you being inclusive for the mere sake of being inclusive? Or are you genuinely interested in getting to know who the person is beyond their label? On behalf of all the award recipients, 
I'd like to thank the committee for celebrating all diversity at this wonderful event.